Hey everyone, Darren here, joined by Gina, product design leader for Runner. This is the um, Get That Runner 15 and 5 um, iteration kickoff video. And as always, we'll start first with Gina Doll covering all of the interesting things that are happening from a roadmap perspective and also from a design um, and user experience point of view in Runner Fleet. Over to you, Gina. Thanks, Darren. All right, I will share my screen and just walk you through what we will be doing in 15.5. Um, so as just a reminder, quick reminder about what Runner Fleet is, we um, are focusing on providing one view where the admin persona or platform engineer is able to manage all of the runners um, in their fleet easily and take actions on them quickly, uh, depending on what scenarios that they're in. So for this milestone specifically, we are. We have a few bugs that we're going to be focusing on, um, but I'm going to go to features first. So we're going to look at the group runners view, and today what we're doing here is we're displaying the runners that are registered within that group um, and the ones that you can actually edit as a group owner, but we're not displaying the runners that you can use to run jobs for any of the projects in that group or in that group in general. So we want, in this issue, we're going to be displaying all of those runners that are available to you, and you'll be able to toggle that on and off um, so that you don't always have to see however many runners are available to you. And this will help be able to discover the runners that are available to run your jobs um, so that you're not wondering which one is running your current job. Um, and then another feature that is good to point out is we'll be adding tags to uh, a tag filter to the group runners view, which has been really commonly asked for lately. Uh, so now you'll be able to filter your runners by tags in the groups view. And one other issue that I'll point out is we're going to be adding an owner into the admin area runners table first, and then we'll move to the group runners table. But the owner is going to be the um, group project or the instance where that runner was registered, so where that registration token is linked to. And this will really help be able to point users to the person who registered that and has to make upgrades or configuration changes and so on. Um, and we've been asked for this for a while, so we're, we're super excited to be able to add this. On the bug side, we have a couple bugs that we're going to be looking at. One about tokens being unique. Um, they're not currently unique, so we're fixing them on the auth token side and registration token side. And then we also had um, some group runners problems where when people were invited as group owners, they weren't able to see the, the runners that they manage. So we're fixing that as well. And then lastly, on the UX side, we are finally going to be putting some time into the MVC for CI job queues. We're really excited about this. We've heard from many, many users that you're looking for more insight into what the runner queue is looking like and why it is taking so long possibly for them to run jobs. Um, so this is gonna be our first iteration on displaying that for shared runners. So we're gonna start with just the shared runners. And that, is it from the runner fleet side? I'll hand it to you, Darren. Darren, you're muted. I was saying thanks, Gina. That was super exciting. <laughs> thanks for catching that I was muted. Um, I was going to uh, quickly share my screen and cover really briefly what's happening with um, Runner Core and Runner SaaS, um, what's planned in 15.5. And um, Gina, thanks for the call on the direction page. Just a quick reminder to everyone that might be looking in the video, we do have separate direction pages for all of these categories, Runner Fleet um, that Gina is managing and with the rest of the team, Runner Core and Runner SaaS. And again, you can find these pages in about to get that .com. Um, when you go to the runner core, runner SAS, all on the free direction pages, what we try to do here under strategic priorities 
is give you sort of like that big picture view by quarter, some of like the sort of like the big things we're theme thematic things we are thinking about and that we are working towards. Um, so that's what you see here. And then in the iteration plans, we kind of go obviously a little bit deeper and now more into the tactical um, weeds, if you will, in terms of the things that are actually on deck. So for 15.5 for Runner Core, as is the case in every iteration for Runner Core, a significant um, percentage of our engineering um, investment uh, and or prioritization. Um, is first and foremost on resolving any known um, security issues. So that's the first thing you'll see here on our list. It's on the bug section. We've got a couple of things that are security related. Uh, and then we also have a lot, some capacity, significant capacity set aside for reducing our backlog of aged um, S2 bugs. And so as you're looking at this video right now, the particular the list that's on the screen for run of core in terms of bug, um, bugs that are on the candidates for 55 is a tad bit long. And so by the time we actually get into our iteration cycle, we'll potentially prune this list down a bit um, just because we have limited capacity. But this is right now the, the current thinking in terms of um, those bugs that we at least are considering um, to move forward on in 15.5. From a features perspective, and there are a couple of things that I want to call your attention to that we really would love to get over the finish line in 15.5, and that will provide a lot of um, incremental value to you, the end user community, as well as to our customers. Um, the first one here is just masking of um, tokens. And this is again, it's a feature set, but it's also related to, to security concerns. And we want to add additional security in our logging, logging mechanism for certain types of tokens, of tokens with a certain string, and the specific string in this case is GLPAD. Um, beyond this one, the next new feature that I'm super excited and, and hopeful that we will make um, traction on N15.5, and this is related to our secure software supply chain strategy, is native, natively signing the um, get the run and build artifacts. Um, if you recall, a few iterations ago, we released the MVC feature, the, where um, in Get that Runner, we are generating the attestation that's aligned with the SS, SLSA or SALS2 format. And that has been received um, extremely well by our user and customer community. And so as part of our long-term software supply chain security strategy, um, we'll continue building on the capability. The next iteration for Runner as part of that overall strategy is natively signing the build artifact. And so we're super excited about getting into this in, in a bit more here now on Saturday 55. And so, so to start to get a little bit more momentum in terms of adding a, around that capability set around the entire end-to-end -end software supply chain, um, secure software supply chain flow. So looking forward to, to ho us hopefully making meaningful progress in shipping the next iteration uh, for software supply chain in 15.5. Um, the other thing that we are, that's kind of interesting that I'm really hoping that we can get to in 15.5 and to, and to ship for, for you, the user community and customers, um, is this particular feature, is this feature right here, it's called Secure Files Run Support MVC. And this is actually in support of our mobile DevOps strategy. And it's really pretty cool. There's actually a blog post that's coming out. I, I um, suggest you look for it. It should be published pretty soon around the next iteration for mobile DevOps and specifically how you do code signing. And this is another piece of that. So um, again, we're adding a lot of new value added capabilities and features in Runner to make your CI CD experience here get uh, as frictionless as possible. With this feature, for example, we're simplifying, thing, think, we're simplifying the workflows for you if you're doing mobile app development um, with a native um, signing feature we're simplifying things for you in terms of the compliance and to end compliance um, framework. So just to, to quickly recap for Runner Core for 15.5, as always, heavy investment in security issues and bugs. And then in terms of major new features, um, natively signing, um, get that run and build artifacts is the, the, the next big thing that we would really want to get out of the door. And then this other feature as well, the secure files run and support MVC feature set. For Runner SaaS, um, our main focus in 15.5 is actually a lot of intricate planning for the next iteration of our Runner auto scaling architecture, which will be the foundational pieces that we need for supporting the transition to our next Runner scaling 
for our GitLab SaaS Linux runners on GitLab.com, as well as the foundation capabilities for our GitLab SaaS runners on Mac OS and transitioning that offer to LA. So runner SaaS, no new features are planned to ship in 15.5. We'll be spending a lot of time in this release, getting some foundational pieces done from a planning perspective. And so we'll have more to share on what's next from a consumable feature or capabilities perspective for runner SaaS in 15.6. So that's it for GitLab Runner 4 and Runner SaaS in 15.5. Gina, any passing or final comments for your wrap up? Not, not really. I think we're just really excited from the, the new features that we get to work on and then also around being able to make the experience right now better. So lots of excitement. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much, Gina. Have a great weekend, everyone. See you next time when we do Runner 15.6. Cheers.